What is up everybody? My name is Brandon and I'm coming back at you with another video today. Uh, today, the topic that we're going to be looking at is approaching intermediate and advanced tuplets. So if you've ever seen an example of rudimental playing that looks like this, and you were scared of it, didn't know how to count something in there, um, hopefully today this video that we are looking at together will help you to learn how to approach counting something like that, performing, playing something like that. As a preface, uh, today basically what we're gonna be doing is I'm going to go a little more off the cuff sort of than usual. Um, I'm gonna take you through these uh, some prepared materials uh, that I have worked up here. We're just gonna go through these. Um, and then I will also, as necessary, cut in with some metronome playing, some metronomic playing. So if you wanna grab some sticks and a practice pad, um, that would be quite useful to you if this is something that you're interested in doing. So first here, let's just define what, uh, what we're talking about when I say tuplet. So a tuplet is any time that we've got an odd or strange number of strokes or notes placed within the span of an even or normal number of strokes or notes. So what I mean by that, um, a, really, a really easy place to start with this is by looking at eighth notes, okay? So eighth notes, we've seen, we've been playing since sixth grade, fifth grade band, or even before, really. Um, eighth notes, of course, we count as one and two and three and four and. We've simply got two strokes in the span of one beat, right? If our beat is one, two, three, four, we're shoving two notes in the span of one beat. And that's totally normal. We're used to seeing that. We're used to seeing things in groups of twos, fours, um, even six and eight and beyond, of course. Um, the first tuplet that a lot of people end up learning, of course, is the triplet, right? If we take that same beat, one and two and, and if we shove three notes in the span of that beat, we get one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And notice that those are evenly spaced notes, right? That's the, gonna be the big key here. All of these notes that we play are going to be evenly spaced. So. A big reason, uh, a reason that I'm a big proponent of counting triplets as one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, is it makes it a lot easier to spread out the notes. I don't really like when people teach triplets to be counted as triple let, triple let, triple let, triple let, um, because a lot of times um, when I see students who have learned to count triplets in that way, they end up changing and triplets become triple it, 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 triple it. And of course, I'm not saying that it's impossible to turn one triplet two tri into one triplet, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, but it's a lot harder to do. You can see I'm already struggling to do that. So it's a lot easier to count triplets as one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Let's go on. Another very common tuplet that we see is the 16th triplet or the sextuplet. Okay, so if we start with 16th notes, which is our beat again, two, three, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, we get four notes per beat. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. If we move over to sextuplets or 16th triplets, we get six per beat, right? So we would count that as one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet, one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet, one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet. Okay, so we're inserting six notes in the space of four notes. Okay, makes sense? So to transfer off between the two, if we have one measure of sixteenths and one measure of sixteenth triplets, it would sound a one E and a two E and a three E and a triplets. Now one triplet and triplet, two triplet and triplet, three triplet and triplet, four triplet and triplet. Okay, so going six notes in the span of four is totally, again, pretty, pretty accepted, pretty widely seen, um, especially if you're into rudimental playing. You've probably seen this before at some point in middle school or certainly by high school band, you will have seen something like this. Um, one of the more common odd tuplets and the first sort of strange thing that we're gonna get into now uh, is going to be the quintuplet or spanning five per beat. 
So if we start with 16th notes here, we get a 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a 1 E and a 2 E and a... You can imagine what it would sound like to squeeze five evenly spaced notes in the span or where we would normally have four notes. To count this, let's count uh, university, 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 university. Okay. Um, since again, we like to know where we are in the measure, let's replace instead of saying the U in university, the first of five notes, right? University. Let's replace it with the beat that we're actually playing. So this will take some choreography, um, or maybe not choreography, but at least some planning and some practice to be able to count this. So rather than saying university, university, let's say one university, two university, three university, four university, one university, two university, three university, four university, one university, two university, three university, four university. Okay, so our beat is still gonna be in the same place. One, two, three E and a four university, one university, two E and a three university, four E and a. Let's head over to the metronome now and, and, and play some of these. Great, so coming back here, let's take a look at more of a strange grouping, um, or not strange, but rather less common grouping of what we would see with some fives in the space of fours. So seeing five sixteenths in the space of four sixteenths um, is not as strange, it's not as common. What you would probably see less often though, at least in rudimental playing, is to have five eighth notes in the space of four eighth notes, okay? So to make sure that we're counting this correctly, let us start by playing our quintuplets, our one university, two university, three university, four university. And as you're doing this, remove the left hand from what you're playing. And this will help us get the timing of the notes that we're actually going to play here. And I'll, I'll sort of re-explain this once we have the context of how to play it. Okay, so we would start with one university, two university, three university, four university, one university, two university, three university, four university. Or to take out some of those unplayed, unspoken syllables, it would sound one university, two university, three university, four university, one ver t ne se, three ver t ne se. One ber t ne se three ne versity four ne versity. Okay, so let's take a look at how this would actually be written now. You can see that it looks very similar to sort of the notation that we're used to. So we've got five written above the uh, the subdivision, or in this case, the division that we're playing. Our division is eighth notes. We can tell that because we've got one beam running across the whole thing. We've got five in the space of four. Hey, it's me, the editor. I didn't really leave a good amount of room for that playing example, so I had to just chop it in. Uh, so I'm gonna roll back. I'm gonna do some uh, cool editing tricks here. Uh, I'm gonna roll back what I was just saying to pick up and then say it again because I am an idiot. Our division is eighth notes. We can tell that because we've got one beam running across the whole thing. We've got five in the space of four. Another way that we could write this for the sake of clarity is to do five colon four. Five eighth notes in the space of four eighth notes.
And this is going to be a common thing when you're trying to figure out at what speed should you play these notes, at what evenly spaced distance are these notes from one another. So we can figure a lot of this out through deduction by looking at how many beams are running across the notes. Is it zero beams in the, space, in the case of quarter notes, right? No beams on a quarter note. Is it one beam in the case of eighth notes? We've got one beam running across, therefore we know we're playing eighth notes. Is it two beams in the case of sixteenths, three in the case of thirty seconds, four in the case of sixty fourths, and so on and so on. So in finding that out, that's going to give you a lot of clues on where to put these notes in between your anchor points. Everything that we've done so far can be looked at in the lens of one beat. You can tell our anchor point is the beat to beat to beat to beat. Every time we say a number, one, two, three, four. How many notes are we putting in the space of one, two, three, four? So let's move on now. Let's see an example where our anchor points have shifted. Maybe it's not in the space of one, two, three, four. Are we fitting our tuplet? Let's look in the case of this playing example here, and we'll just start right off with the metronome so that you can hear and see what this looks like uh, pretty close to perfectly in time. Okay, so let's take a look now at the actual music that's in front of us. Let's take a look at this written and deduce together at what speed should we play this. If you hadn't heard it played for you, how can we figure out how fast this is? The first thing I like to look at when we have what's referred to as a ratio triplet like this is to look at the number on the right side of the colon, okay? So in this case, it's gonna be three, okay? So we get our context is in the space of three something, okay? So think about this. We have we can see we have four in the space of three something. To figure out what that something is, let's take a look at our beams. Now we can figure out that our anchor points are three sixteenth notes. So in the space of three sixteenth notes. So let's take a look here at where our anchor points are gonna lie, okay? In this case, our anchors, our accents are going to fall on one, uh, and then of course we get and, uh. so one, uh, and uh, because that would be three sixteenth notes, right? We get one, two, three sixteenth notes, one, two, three sixteenth notes. That's the three in the four against three sixteenth notes, one, two, three sixteenth notes. So that would fall on one e and a uh, two e, 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 and a uh, one e and a uh, two e, and a uh, one e. Uh, and a uh, one e and a uh, two and these anchor points basically become a new metronome. They're a new beat, a new tempo, a new meter within the old tempo and meter that we've been playing in. So let's take these. These are now out of time, sort of in their own realm that we're going to access as anchor points, as metronomic beats within the old meter and the old tempo. I think I said that already. <laughs> So going over to the metronome now, just to make sure that it's as perfectly spaced as possible, here is going to be playing the uh, the full filled out 16th notes, the one E and a two E and a three, four, one E and a two E and a three, four. And then just moving right along here, we're just gonna take out those inner notes of the E and and the two E will be removed. And this is going to be our anchor points in context. Now that we've got that figured out, we need to figure out exactly how fast do our notes need to be played to fit four notes in the space of three. This is what we were talking about. It's not necessarily an odd group, right? Because four is odd. It's more of a strange grouping of notes. We're fitting four notes in the space of three notes, right? That's sort of a strange grouping to have to hear. So what, you, what I would suggest to do is to work out a way in your metronome that you can uh, set up, and I'll be showing some screenshots 
of the metronome that I like to use the way that I have it set up if I needed to practice something like that. You have to sort of be able to use some ingenuity uh, in the case of using a metronome like this, if you don't have access to a uh, workstation, something like GarageBand, Logic, FL, um, or Ableton, something like that, to where you can set these up, what you'll have to do is practice these measures with the anchor points where they are. Okay, so what you'll do is set your metronome appropriately and then just try to squeeze in the correct number of notes. Since I don't have uh, access to a metronome here, I'll just go over and and basically skip the part of watching me, what it would look like for me to try to figure out how fast does da 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 and a three, four, da 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 and a three, four, right? I would of course be doing that with a click to make sure that I'm as close to perfectly in time as possible. It's me again. So what I've done on the metronome here is first set it to 16-4 time signature, right? Our time signature now, rather than these four, right, the quarters, 16-4 quarters, uh, rather than, than them representing quarter notes, by setting the BPM to 400 BPM, we are getting those quarter notes basically representing, or the way that I'm thinking about it, are the quarter notes become 16th notes at 100 BPM, right? So four times 100, four notes in the space of one beat at 100 BPM is 400 strokes per minute, 416th notes per minute. And then you can see I've blanked out the the notes that are basically the non-anchor points. So I've got one, two, three, right? The distance of three. So the first note is playing, second two are not, as if they become rest like we just practiced. The fourth note, the uh, the new uh, right, in this case, is playing, the next two are not, the two e are not, and then the and of two is playing, the uh of two is not playing, and then I've got what would be on beats three, four, playing, and all of the inner sixteenth notes are not playing. Uh, this is a great opportunity to sort of bring up how you would take this from this sort of intermediate idea of counting tuplets into more of the advanced territory, um, which is applying stickings, okay, to to what you are playing. So in this case, a lot of times what people like to do is put is put the paradiddle sticking in with this, right? So you get paradiddle, paradiddle, and a three, four, paradiddle, paradiddle, and a three, four. You can also turn this into its own exercise uh, for paradiddle timing, where you go paradiddle, paradiddle, para, paradiddle, 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 and you can put those in there to act as sort of a paradiddle timing. It helps to really easily introduce this idea of ratio tuplets. Um, it's just a really cool exercise all around to be working on. Great, moving on to our last area, the last tuplet that we're going to learn together today the last style of tuplet that we're going to learn to count today, which is what's called a nested tuplet. In starting to look at nested tuplets, let's take a look at our anchor points. In this case, we're going to be looking at quarter note triplets, okay? So quarter note triplets, uh, be sure that you are spacing these notes evenly, right? A lot of times if you give this rhythm to, you know, like a middle school band or a less rhythmically conscious high school band, you'll get, oh, I know how to count this. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Right, when really the rhythm that you're playing looks like this, you get one, uh, and three, uh, and one, uh, and three, uh, and the way that this should actually be counted, of course, is if you have triplets, right? You're playing one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, and you remove that left hand, the speed that you're playing at, uh, 
is going to be the speed of your quarter note triplets, which you would count one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, one let, trip, three let, trip, one let, trip, three let, trip. Let's take a look at this in context with quarter note metronome going over the top of it so that you can hear the spacing of these notes and that they are even. If you find yourself sneaking into that one triplet, three triplet, one triplet, three triplet, then go back, check yourself, make sure that these are being spaced out evenly. Moving on, this is where we're going to start really approaching and seeing the nested tuplets start showing their identities here. For the case of this nested tuplet, what we're going to be looking at are triplets within quarter note triplets, or rather, I should say, eighth note triplets within quarter note triplets, okay? So this is going to be the context for our example. We'll get, uh, let's play all of these on the right hand. I'll, uh, it'll become apparent why in a moment. So let's play this here all on the right hand. One, two, three, let trip, 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 one. Okay, and I'm sure that that was not perfectly evenly metronomically spaced, so let's go over to the metronome uh, to hear this example in context. So now let's take a look at our music here. We're gonna look closely at the music. We get one, two, and then we see sort of a skeleton of what we've got, what we had before with this three let trip. Within those anchor points of three let trip, we're going to put a triplet inside of that, okay? And this is the reason for the sticking that I had you play before. Just to hear how this timing is going to line up, uh, it's, it's easy to get this going where you're going one, two, three, let trip, one, two, three, let trip, one, and then just insert between those anchor points some pa da da, some right, left, left. Pa da da, pa da da, pa da da, one. So we get one, two, pa da da, pa da da, pa da da, one, two, three, let trip, one, two, three, let trip, one, two, three, let trip, one, two, Three, lad, trip, one. Going over to the metronome, make sure that this is lining up correctly. And just as an example to, to really nail this home, let's take a look at one other common tuplet. This is not a nested tuplet, except that it is. Let's take a look at this last example here. So that should sound familiar, right? This is the same rhythm, just written out differently. In fact, let's take a look at it written out this way. And you can see here, let's go through our method together. We get eight sixteenth notes. Okay, so in the space of eight sixteenth notes, we are putting nine. Another way we could say this is nine sixteenth notes in the space of eight. 16th notes, okay? Since there are two different ways of writing this, I don't wanna belabor this point. I don't want to uh, you know, overthink this too much. Um, simply put, this is for a lot of notation softwares, this is a lot easier to put in. When you're working something with like Finale, MuseScore, Sibelius, Dorico, um, all of this has to be input and written in in a certain way. So while this may still be technically correct, maybe it is easier to see uh, for your eyes to, to group and to picture these this way, right? To picture the nested triplet may be easier um, than the uh, just the written out 
sort of ratio style tuplet here. But as someone who has been working pretty intensely within Finale, uh, specifically over the past year, um, I can tell you that inputting this is an absolute nightmare and it's not fun to do. And it's just not something that a lot of people want to spend time doing um, when this is basically the exact same thing. It, it works, functions the same. Um, it just maybe might take just a second longer for your mind to register what exactly you're playing. The other reason for this is going back to the actual nested tuplet example. We're not going to get into this right now, but look at the look at these triplets. What if you had gone on the three let, had those be triplets, and then have the last anchor point play 16th notes, right? So if you go back to the playing example, that's what's going on in that beat. In that case, I think it would just be easier to notate as nested tuplets. Um, because what you've got is a changing rhythm, a, a changing underlying tuplet within the tuplet, right? The nested tuplet um, that doesn't carry through all the way to the end. And from here, you can just go crazy, right? You could shove five, you could do four to however many you want um, within this tuplet uh, of the quarter note, right? The quarter note triplet that's that's going over them just as long as your anchor points are staying the same that's basically the approach that you'll take to performing these tuplets like so obviously this is sort of a skeleton of everything that's available to you once you feel comfortable counting tuplets i just wanted to sort of give a crash course in this and and just kind of get your minds thinking of how this goes i've had a lot of fun tearing this down i've been working on this video for a while here and i just went and grabbed some some examples of sort of the the ideas and the flows for how I wanted to work this out. I decided eventually that it would just be easier to simplify it, make sure that it's not too uh, overly complicated, and to just sort of give give the basics and, and give you some common tuplets to start with. From here, really, uh, you should be pretty well equipped to, to count anything really any tuplet related thing that's that's put in front of you just with these tools so that's sort of the crossover between intermediate and advanced tuplet counting is how far do you want to take it how perfectly can you execute these rhythms in time the last thing like we briefly touched on was applying stickings to these as well which i've also done in the playing example um, at the very beginning where uh, we've get a lot of paddas some six stroke roll uh, paradiddles, just some various rudimental stickings uh, to put in there. It not only makes it more fun, in some cases it makes them easier to play and to execute as well. So there's that. If you'd like me to further explore this or break down in greater detail um, some of these things, or maybe even go through the process, right, pen to paper, um, I would love to just record that and go through some of these things. I've been having a blast with this topic, um, and this is definitely a video that I've been wanting to make for a long time. Uh, it's just been going through a lot of trimming down and making sure that I'm saying only the most important things rather than overloading with information. I think this is a good way to go. And then in the future, expand upon some of these things and make sure that everyone's well equipped to uh, correctly perform these things and to work through them on your own, given the tools that you have, being able to count and perform them properly. But otherwise, that should do it for today. I hope you all are doing well, being safe, washing your hands, just generally taking care of yourself, those around you, checking.